So when one company decides to create a range of products that then subsequently dominates a certain sector in the market, it's not uncommon for other brands to attempt at doing the same. So is this latest attempt enough to step away from the roadcast shadow? Let's find out, shall we? This video is made by Radio.co. To start your free Radio.co trial in seconds, head to Radio.co and click on the pricing page. Hey, Phil here from Radio.co, and today I'm joined by and playing with the DLZ creator by Mackey. This is their own attempt, Mackey's attempt, that is, to create a sort of uh, mega mixer slash console is the only way that I can uh, really describe it. Um, now, aside from the unboxing video we've done already of this and uh, a headphones uh, review that uh, Rowan's done previously, this is the first proper bit of kit that Mackie have a Delta. So it's very, very exciting to be talking about it. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Mackie, they are uh, a brand that over the last 50 years has kind of really revolutionized what it means to create a reliable, powerful piece of recording and broadcasting kit. And, you know, founded in the 70s, creating albeit garish, but still reliable, budget-friendly pieces of kit. They've then spent the last five decades really showing the world what they can do in terms of providing reliable kit in bigger and better pieces of equipment that are still budget-friendly and capable of doing so, so much. So, uh, you know, in those decades, they've created microphones and headphones and studio monitors. And, of course, mixers and consoles, with my favourite mixer being one, the Big Knob Series. And this is their latest edition, as I say, the DLZ Creator. It's a piece of kit designed to really take anyone with any form of vision and passion to create their own podcast or radio station with ease. Again, the reason why on the other side I've got the Rodecaster Pro 2 is because it's no secret, you know, we are big fan favorites of the Rodecaster series and, and Rode in general. Um, and I feel like that the, both of these companies, Mackie and Rode, are really on the same crusade, you know, in, in, in creating products that are reliable and user-friendly and, 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 and budget-friendly. I mean, these are pretty expensive pieces of kit. This uh, itself, the DLZ creator, is retailing about £700, so, you know, $700, $800, let's say. And that's about the same price as the Rodecaster Pro 2. But the reason why when people ask us about pieces of kit to use for starting their own radio station or podcast, we always recommend the Rodecaster Pro 2, usually because it's, you know, it's expensive, but it's an investment and it's something you are incredibly unlikely to replace going forward and it's capable of so so much it's it's user friendly not in just how it e how easy it is to use but how easy it is to incorporate into anything you want to do broadcasting wise so you know the smart pads and the uh, up to four mic channels the touch screen the, the ability to record directly onto it and up until now that's the only version of this kind of mixer console hybrid that we've been shouting about until now that is. So when Mackie got in touch with us uh, a couple of months ago to ask if we wanted to take a look at their latest mixer. It, it's been out a while, um, but this DLZ creator from Mackie is kind of their own, I mean, I was alluding to it at the start. It, it's hard not to see any similarities between this and, you know, something great that's come before. And, you know, they, they do have some similarities, but all mixers kind of look the same and do the same anyway. But, uh, you know, I'm mainly referring to, you know, the multicolored buttons, the, the vibrant touch screen um and you know all the all the functionality that it seems to have and of course i'd say a lot of similar similarities between a lot of pieces of kit but uh yeah it's hard to deny how much of an impact road have made with um their roadcaster series so it is good to see you know friendly competition is good it's good to see other companies doing their own versions and takes of it so how does this version stack against this version let's see what it does so the main things that, uh, I mean, for, for starters, we're actually recording on the DLZ Creator here. So again, uh, first of all, it's got recording qualities, a nice big old chunky button, which is something I actually mentioned when talking about the Rodecaster Pro 2 recently, how, um, uh, so you know, the Rodecaster Pro 2's got the actual physical button there and the Rodecaster Duo doesn't. It's a touchscreen. Ew. But I do like the, the button that is still there. So it's got a big old meaty ugh, actual pressable button and we're recording directly onto it. Again, you can record directly onto a SD card, micro SD card, which we've got plugged in currently, uh, as well as a USB stick if you want to as well. So it's a good, um, I would say portable, um, more on that in a moment. But it's, you know, it's the ability that you don't need your computer or anything. You can just record directly onto it, which 
for, for, for helping people kickstart their own radio shows and podcasts, that's what you want. You just want to record directly onto it, which is why it's good to spend a little bit more money on a piece of kit like this. But in terms of what makes the DLZ creator, um, you know, particularly uh, worthy of shouting about and what they've uh, really gone, gone on to state very vibrantly on the box and that the campaigns for this piece of kit is a couple of features. First of all is the what they call the mix agent. Now, what this is, this is like an assistant that helps you set up the piece of kit in the way that you would hope to use it, I guess, in regards to your um, ability, let's say. So when you are launching this for the first time, if you're switching on for the first time, you will see the setup assistant and that will guide you through, you know, setting up your microphones and adjusting the correct headphone levels and what all the other levels do, you know, is one of them for Bluetooth, is one of them for the SD card. But one thing it does is it actually cuts out by choice some of the features and customization options available to you because if you don't think you're going to use those, then it doesn't need to flood the machine with those options if they're going to go untouched, which I think is really, really great. It's a really neat, again, a user-friendly approach to hand-holding and guiding people onto the piece of kit. So you'll find this, actually, if I go onto the settings, and uh, we've got the system, and you see here, you might be able to see it on the camera here, but it says mode enhanced. So I've got it specifically in the enhanced version, which is at level two. If I click on that, you'll be able to see there are three different versions of this. There is easy, enhanced, and pro and at the bottom you can turn on and off the setup assistant which will help you get things set up but what this does is this opens out different options for you to customize and play around with so if you were just looking to get up and go you know you're not looking to uh, add a lot of uh, intricate presets or really adjust how much uh, gain and how much echo and reverb you want to have uh, a, you know a freedom of, of, of manipulation over then chances are you're just going to be using the easy option which I imagine a lot of people would, would just settle with so if I click on that uh, and click next it will then uh, switch that so now there are a couple of options which have now been hidden from me you know but that's fine. I don't intend to use anything else. I'm literally going to be using this to record multi-track options. We are uh, recording onto the desk already, and I'm just using a very basic microphone preset um, on my channel, which is actually aligned, if you can see that, to the SM7B. So it comes with presets already for general dynamic and condenser microphones and a couple of fan favorites like the SM7B here. Um, now, of course, if I wanted to open out a couple of more options than I can do. I can just go back to settings, go to the mode, and I can switch it to enhanced. And what that will do is that will now open up some ability for me to adjust some uh, very specific points of my microphone. Now, it won't let me necessarily change a lot of options while we're recording. Mind you, obviously, we're recording onto the piece of kit already. But I can come over to, you know, my, uh, my recording options and my microphone options, and it will ask me to really sort of come down to uh, set um, um, uh, specific things about the microphone that I can adjust the, the the echo, the reverb, and things like that. If I wanted a bit more options, again, I can switch over to the Pro version, which allows me to really manipulate the different uh, levels and versatilities of, of, of a lot of these options. So um, I'm, I'm being mindful not to interact with it too much because I say we are recording this on the, this piece of kit here, so I don't want to uh, end up cancelling the recording and then I'm just... You know, that's it. That's the shortest review I've ever done. But here, it just allows you to change things like in the effects. So this in the effects here, this is what you will see in the pro version. So you've got very specific uh, virtual knobs that you can um, adjust and play around with. You can turn the effect on and off. Uh, we're just going to turn this uh, off, uh, for example, now. Um, but it lets you change things um, over there. We've got a delay as well. Uh, a cr chrono, oh, oh, chronotonic delay. Sounds delicious. Um, so there's a couple of options again. I don't have any need to use any of these, so that's why I would never use this particular version of it. But if I come back to the overview here, I can switch back, I say, to the enhanced version. And I will then go to the effects, and you'll see already there's now just one knob for each of these features because you're only going to be turning it on and off and, and using it as such. So yeah, there's as you see, it, it depends on what you want to use it for. If I switch it back to easy, effects that panel isn't even there so yeah it's it's a, i think it's a great hand holding experience if you are quite um not put off but you're a bit daunted by 
by what this uh, piece of kit can do and you're thinking, oh, good gravy, there's a lot there that I don't think I'm going to be using, then you don't need to. You know, it can be hidden and then you can, you know, if you find that you want to improve a bit of your voice and uh, and change kind of like how you sound, then absolutely, you know, open up those settings there. So I think that's a really, really neat way. The setup assistant as well is incredibly intuitive and it helps you really understand what optimum uh, headphone levels you want to set. Um, it allows you to, of course, adjust all your different channels. So my channel for my, my uh, four microphones here, I've got uh, things that could be a USB import. I've got my smart pads. I've got uh, Bluetooth. I've got a USB drive. So they are all there for you to change. And the setup assistant is incredibly intuitive. Another great thing that they do, which um, is they're shouting about, it's called Auto Mix, and that is and the Auto Mix feature I think is something that is quite overlooked until you begin editing something and you're realizing, well, oh, maybe I should have done a bit more producing. So, you know, usually, you know, if you're doing a, a radio show, you may have a producer with you, or you're doing a podcast, and you may have someone uh, on hand to maybe adjust levels and things. If you are in a quite a heated discussion, you're having a big laugh with everybody, sometimes, you know, you might need to quickly on the fly adjust your levels to make sure that you aren't talking over each other. It's not too loud and distorted. The auto mix feature kind of does a lot of that for you. So by clicking on it, what it will allow you to do is adjust who has priority or rather which input of the microphone has priority. So um, I could turn the feature on like so. And what it would do is it would allow me to adjust. Um, okay, so I am the host of this show. I am microphone input one. I want to have high priority, which means if someone is talking to me at the exact same time that I'm speaking, first of all, it's not quite a good conversation if we're talking at the same time, but it means I am automatically going to be a lot clearer and a lot louder than the other microphone input. It's like they have auto ducked. And you can set this for all four microphone inputs. So I could have high priority as me as the host, Microphone two might be my co-host, yet they could have priority two. And then I might have two guests and they are priority three. They are low priority, which means if we are talking over each other, me being the host, I'm most important. I need to be heard loud and clear. So it, 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 it's, it's something that means that even without, you know, we, we don't all have the ability to have a producer. We absolutely don't all need producers at all. You know, someone who is literally just being vigilant on the, uh, on the mixes. And it's something that I usually do myself. But sometimes, again, in a in a rip roaring, heated conversation, sometimes I can forget, and uh, you know, I, I can get lost in what we're talking about. So this is a fantastic way of letting the software do it for you. The software built into the mixer. So Auto Mix is a fantastic tool, which I think is something we don't think about too much. But I imagine that would radically improve the quality of of my particular podcasts anyway. Hey you, yes you. Did you know you could start your very own radio station right now for free? Yes, for free. Simply click the link in the corner to start your seven day free trial today. Of course, other features as well that are included are a mix minus. So a mix minus basically means that if you have a call, you know, like a phone plugged in, you've got a call hooked up to the desk, then it means that there's going to be no, I guess, echo and distortion when the person is talking to you. So it's it's kind of like you're speaking more in real time and it's real responses without any sort of uh, software and noise and interference getting in the way. So mix minus, again, that I, think, uh, I believe that's seen in the Rodecaster Pro 2 anyway. It's pretty standard these days, but it's always something worth making a note of. Uh, of course, as I say, it's got the uh, the Bluetooth integration as well. So the Bluetooth will allow you to uh, obviously hook up a, a mobile device, which I've got already on there. Um, so I can play, uh, again, a caller or a bit of audio or something through that. Which So, you know, I could have a um, uh, an iPad maybe that's got uh, virtual, D, you know, a bit of music uh, software on it and just funnel that through. Um, it's also got, of course, got USB communication as well. So I could plug this into my laptop, which I've got already. And if you've watched the um, How to Broadcast Live video that I did recently about the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Duo, then that would work in the exact same way. I can get Virtual DJ or Serato or anything up on my computer and I can send that across the desk. I can mix it and then I can send that out through Radio.co to broadcast live. So even though it's not a specific video about this piece of kit, if you do want to know how that would look and, and what you know, the very limited amount of time and effort you would need to spend setting it up, then do check out the video. I'm sure we'll put a, a link about it somewhere here. It's a really useful video just to learn how to broadcast live anyway. And all you're doing in that situation is swapping out the Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Duo and replacing it with the DLZ Creator, and it worked the exact same way. Uh, and of course, a very, uh, a very overused feature in my 
Roadcaster Pro 2, not even in a serious capacity, just because my daughter likes pressing the funny buttons, is the inclusion of smart pads, um, uh, or hotkeys rather. Now, these are such a great little feature anyway, because, you know, as a radio broadcaster, you might have lots of ads or sponsorship tags or, um, you know, just funny sound effects or uh, stingers or just or bits of instrumental bed you want to play. That has honestly been a fantastic feature to use in the Rodecaster series. I know there are other pieces of kit that do offer that as well, like um, you know, the Go XLR that I uh, reviewed uh, quite a while ago. And it's great to see that these are available here because they are such a useful tool to have for, for lining up. Again, not just comedy sound effects, but just stingers and ads. And, you know, if you need to take an emergency break, it's something that you can have on there. If someone swears on air, why not do a beep? Um, so it's good to see that, you know, they are available here. Fair enough, there isn't as many uh, pads and, and banks available. You can fit quite a lot in there, but still more than enough than what you'll need. And uh, fortunately as well, it comes pre-packed with a couple of sound effects already. So I don't remember what's on each one. <laughs> I have no idea what that was, but it was very loud and disturbing. Uh, we've also got... <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice comedy laugh. Uh, maybe a beep? Oh, even worse, an air horn. But you see, you know, these come preloaded on here. And again, you can just come to the sample pads and you can rename, you can swap out, you can change what you want. And obviously you can cycle through the, the banks that are available there. Uh, more options are going to be available as well, depending on what um, what version of the DLZ mixer you, you, you're, you're using, you know, Easy Pro enhanced and things. But um, yeah, you know, they're such a, such a really nice feature to have and I think that it's it's quite essential for anyone who's looking at seriously broadcasting radio just to have things that you can just fire off as and when through your kit alone and no need to use any other software uh of course I've I've not talked about it and I really need to do it's probably the first thing I, I mentioned um when we did the unboxing is this screen is gorgeous it's a lot um, less gorgeous than it was when I started this video about 15 minutes ago because uh, it's got lots of sweaty fingerprints on it because it's incredibly hot in Manchester today. Uh, but I swear before my grubby mitts were all over it, this is a gorgeous uh, HD 10.1-inch uh, screen, uh, you know, twice the size of the, the Rodecaster Pro. And you absolutely do not need a screen this big, but my gosh, is it nice to have. Um, and it just, it, I guess it's something that seems a bit more... Um, I don't know, I guess a bit more radio, a bit more professional. It just allows you to see all your, um, you know, your levels accurately. It means, you know, not that there was ever an issue using this screen at all, but I guess on this particular device, you're probably going to be cycling through options and using the screen a lot more than you would actually do on there. Because, you know, you've got the, on the Rodecaster, you've got the specific buttons here, which goes into each subsequent menu, whereas... There isn't an equivalent there, so you are going to be having to have specific buttons to adjust what you're doing on here. But it's it's a glorious screen. It's incredibly sensitive, so it's very responsive. Uh, and, you know, if I just want to instantly switch, oh, I need to uh, change a particular channel I've got, or I need to just change the SD card. We've got an SD card recording here to play. I need to change any of the media that's loaded up as here. Um, you know, it's, it's all here. Uh, the snapshots as well is a great little feature. It basically allows you to save a preset that you have. So if you've got everything set up in specifically, uh, you know, you've got your Bluetooth on that fader, um, you liked the specific settings and presets you put on a particular microphone, take a snapshot of it and you can load that up anytime you like. So you can have different shows or different people using it. Maybe it's a community desk you're using pe loads of people coming this to do their shows on then you can have your own setups um ready to go and to be loaded up at the press of a button but yeah this screen is incredibly vibrant it's bright all the pretty colors go well with it and um yeah it's probably where most of the budget went on it's like having a nintendo switch built into your roadcaster pro but it's it, it's a very welcome need unnecessary but my, yeah it's lovely oh, actually, no it is necessary because you can get to touch it a lot it, it, it's a very nice little thing um Microphone preamps, um, they are uh, what they call they are uh, Onyx 80 microphone preamps. Um, so again, Mackie, uh, you know, for you know decades have spent a lot of time making good quality um, pieces of kit and microphones. And you know, there's there's no doubt that that, that software that they use and the preamps that they've uh, created uh, work stellar. And hopefully, you'll be able to see that you know or, or hear rather that my voice has been sounding nice on this particular preamp and uh, and preset we have here. Um, in terms of like down points, cons really, it's something that I take for granted a bit, particularly with such a powerful piece of kit, is that the Rodecaster Pro 2 in particular fits beautifully on my particular setup and as does the Rodecaster Pro Duo, uh, of course. 
you know, being pretty much half the size. But this is a, uh, a perfect sort of weight and size for my particular needs. So for my particular office-based studio that I, um, you know, do a lot of broadcasting from, this, I think, uh, when, well, when I was reviewing it at home and testing it out at home, this was very difficult to accommodate in my particular setup. And that's just my personal tastes here. You might, have, you know, have a big studio space and this would look gorgeous in a big, sort of a big, massive table that you might have in your studio. But for, for a particular, a more of a, let's say, a casual user or just uh, an every now and then podcaster and broadcaster, this would be a bit of a burden to have in my particular setup. Uh, it's also quite heavy. Again, it's something which you take for granted. When Rode were jumping from the Rodecaster Pro original to the 2, they not only managed to make it smaller, but also a lot lighter, but still maintain all the incredible features and, and inner workings of it. This is a bit of a beast. It's not the heaviest thing on earth, but it's still not the lightest thing it could ever be. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things... It, it, a particular circumstance may mean this is not the right piece of kit for you. For me personally, size and weight of it isn't, but functionality, of course, it absolutely is. So obviously, you take that judgment for, for, for what you see it is. Um, I guess in terms of, I guess, what I'd be using it for, the presets are quite limiting. Uh, it's not really an, a, a negative for me. I don't tend to use presets outside of the suggestions to use one for a particular microphone. Like this suggested that I could use the short SM7B preset, so I went ahead and did that. I could ignore that, and there's actually a feature that when you go on each microphone, like here, you can actually see where it says um, you can bypass all the processing, so you can turn every bit of processing off. And you can get the software to listen to you and adjust what it thinks the right gain is in any particular presets for it itself. So again, this piece of kit can set it up for you. Um, some of you, even on the most advanced, might feel like there's, there's things you don't necessarily need or things uh, that it's lacking. But again, it's not really a negative for me because I never tend to use presets again outside most uh, sort of basic ones um and the other thing as well I, I think it's mainly just because i'm used to how the roadcaster pro 2 works is you know if i wanted to fire off one of these hotkeys you know a very light tap on one of those buttons that does it whereas this does require a bit more of a oh that was that was incredibly loud a bit more of a, a button press that's their uh, mackie's own bed there it's a bit more of a press. I mean, I appreciate the button. I think if I'd been using this, I would be a bit shocked by how responsive that is. But I think in terms of if I want to fire something off, I think, you know, I think there's there's it's a, a bit too a bit too stiff in my particular uh renegade sort of way. So if I want to like sp specifically press something, you know, as such. Whereas, yeah, I'm just used to just simply tapping it on there. Again, that's just a personal preference. It's it's very difficult to give specific cons about this piece of kit because it is just all circumstantial and to do with your preference uh as i say it's quite a large and weighty piece of kit an issue for me not necessarily an issue for you uh the way that the smart pads interact again might be an issue for me not necessarily for you but all in all it, it, it's a glowing impression for this piece of kit as well it's uh, a gorgeous um piece of kit it's a very robust very sturdy it's weighted because i think with it being quite heavy, you know it's good. It's, it's you hope it's a sturdy. You hope you know if you were unfortunate to leave it in the middle of a road somewhere, it'd actually punch you the tire of whatever trying to run over it. Um, but it's I think it's absolutely following the criteria and the mantra that Mackie have set over these last fifty years of creating reliable, robust, user friendly, and budget friendly pieces of kit. As I say. Um, but there we have it, you know, not so much a uh, a review or a how to use, just basically my impressions of using it for a couple of days and, um, you know, showing you how it sort of works. Again, you know, it's a very, very beautiful piece of kit that, uh, you know, is very reminiscent of, again, how I've become used to using the Rodecaster Pro 2 for the last 12 months. Um, it's great that more companies are releasing products like this. Like, you know, I'm not saying Rode were the absolutely first ones to do this, but they are the first company to really revolutionize what is capable of a modern day mixing desk you know people wanted something that was professional and easy to use and intuitive and just well professional again um you know and, and people had to use something like you know the axia iq desk you know and that's like what three thousand dollars something like that and you know that used to be the mainstay of if you need something that's professional you need to spend several thousand dollars that's not the case now the roadcaster pro 2 is $700, $800 or so. This is, is about the same. And that's the price point I think you're going to pay for a really, really superb piece of equipment. So Rode have kind of really created 
path, the road, if you will, of of, uh, of what makes an incredible, user-friendly, intuitive, and beautiful machine. And it's amazing to see that uh, Mackie have, uh, you know, taken note. They've not copied it at all. They've taken note and they said, right, we need to do something similar in our own way. And that's exactly what they've done. They've created their own version of this amazing piece of kit by creating their very own in their image of something that echoes what they've been looking to do for 50 years, making something that is sturdy, reliable, easy to use, and, well, it's it's investments that's absolutely going to pay off in spades. But of course, that's just what I think. I mean, have you been using this at all? Are there any other alternatives? I mean, we're always happy to look at other pieces of kit by other brands. Um, so if you, you know, agree with my points about the DLZ creator, or you think I'm just talking out my bum about how much we praise the Roadcaster series, is there something better? Do you wish we'd shut up about these pieces of kit? Do let us know with any recommendations of pieces of kit, mixers, microphones that you think we, it would be worth us chatting about. You can get in touch uh, by sending an email, studio at radio.co. Uh, you can also you know, leave a comment wherever you're finding this video. Just put something in the comments, any recommendations or any thoughts and impressions of yourself. If you think I'm talking waffles, then again, please tell me and I'll speak less waffles, hopefully next time. Uh, and if you would like more videos and talk throughs and ramblings uh, similar to this and hopefully better than this, uh, then you can go to uh, obviously our YouTube channel and just hit subscribe, like, hit the bell icon, and it means as soon as we release more videos about equipment and broadcasting tips, uh, you'll be the first to see it. So, um, yeah, w regardless of what it is you're using, Rode, Mackie, or something in between, take care and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own internet radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think, especially when you make the time to chat to myself or a member of the Radio.co team. To do just that, head to our website, radio.co forward slash demo, where I can talk about your plans, any questions you may have, and you know, me and the team can really get you up to speed in launching your own internet radio station in literally minutes. It couldn't be easier. Why not check out some of our webinars, tutorials, help guides, situated uh, around me or why not visit our website radio.co or even drop me an email studio at radio.co until next time take care and happy broadcasting